I know the words aren't in your uh, bulletin, but anyone who wants to join along can join in. I'm sure a lot of you know this song. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary.
Anybody come up for the children's message today? You'll like this one, it's dangerous. Ah, they're coming together, huh? All right. So, Pentecost, we talked about how Pentecost, uh, uh, the Holy Spirit came down like tons of fire, right? Uh, have you guys ever heard somebody described as a firecracker? Yes. Yes? What does that mean? Uh, a cracker that's on fire. A cracker that's on fire. What's a person who's a, fi that's a, who's a firecracker? What do they like? Explosive. Explosive. Uh, they're on fire and it's going to be exciting, isn't it? All right, have you ever heard anybody described as a wet blanket? Uh oh. Yeah. What do you think it means if somebody's a wet blanket? Does that sound like it? Does that sound like any fun at all? No. Yeah. Here, I've got a, I've got a wet blanket with me. Yeah. Here. What's that feel like? Yeah. Kind of cold and wet, smushy, black. Yeah. Um, the wet blankets were originally used for putting out fires. So if something was on fire, people would get their blankets and they'd soak them in water and throw them on the house to try to put it out. Uh, so a wet, a wet blanket is somebody who just kind of puts out fun. They're just no fun at all. Well, we're going to be reading from the book of Acts today about how the church was born. And of course, we know that uh, those disciples were, they were, like, they were like firecrackers. They were on fire, they were full of energy, and they went out in the streets and woo, they were uh, whooping it up and sharing it with everybody. But there were some wet blankets there too. There were some people that were watching this, they're like, oh, they're kind of nuts. Maybe they're drunk. I don't know what's going on. This is weird. So, uh, this wasn't, uh, there were some people that just weren't getting it there. Uh, but what do you think you'd rather be, a firecracker or a wet blanket? Firecracker, yeah. All right. Well, we're going to do a little demonstration here. Uh, yep, and me, you, guys, you guys might want to get up. I'm not sure you want to sit too close to this. I'm going to need, I'm going to need a firecracker, uh, a Pentecost person, uh, to light my piece of paper on fire here. There I am. You got it? And I'm going to need a wet blanket to put it out. Alan, <laughs> Nobody wants to need a wet blanket? Okay, I'll be the wet blanket. So, unless somebody wants to help. So, this is the world, and we're trying to uh, trying to get some fire of the spirit going here. So, go ahead, Pentecost Christian. Let's, oh, you got to push that top thumb lever down. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So. Kind of set the world on fire, haven't you? <laughs> All right. Oh, uh, you know what? We've never done it that way. We can't go out and talk to people like that. Yeah. Oh, that's no fun, is it? So. All right. Well, I think. Uh, here, thanks. Uh, I think we all have chances to be firecrackers, Pentecost Christians that want to share the Holy Spirit. And I think there are times that we all get to be, or that we're all wet blankets too, where we're kind of discouraging uh, either to ourselves or to others. So what I'd like you guys to try to remember is that we can be Pentecost Christians every day. We can be uh, on fire and ready to talk about uh, what is good about God and share it with people. Or we can be wet blankets. Let's be fire okay? All right, let's go ahead and bow our heads. Lord, we thank you uh, for the gift of the Holy Spirit, which uh, fills us full of energy and makes us excited to share the good news with others. Help us always to be Pentecost Christians, firecrackers that want to set the world on fire, and help us to catch ourselves when we're tempted to be wet blankets so that we don't discourage anyone else. Lord, we pray these things in your name. Amen. All right, thanks. All right. Well, uh, today is a, a wonderful special day because we are welcoming a new member to our congregation. And I'm going to invite uh, uh, John Humphrey to come up and uh, also Jerry and Linda Frail. Uh, Jerry and Linda are going to introduce John to us. Well, this is 
our friend, Reverend John Humphrey. He's an ordained minister. He's an over-the-road truck driver. And he has services and Bible studies at all the different truck stops along the whole United States where he travels. He also runs a online Bible school and also does um, services for care partners in, actually it's Weston, I believe. So we'll just... Pray your ministry. Okay. Search the word ministry. Search the word ministry. So he's a pretty busy guy. I'm yeah. proud to call him our friend. Yeah, very proud. And we're excited to welcome John to the church. Uh, you guys can go ahead and if you want. Uh, if you look inside your bulletin, you'll find a covenant for the reception of new members. And I'm going to... Go ahead. Okay, I'm going to ask uh, John and, and you folks to, to join me in this this morning. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into uh, Christ's holy church. We are incorporated to God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. And all of this is God's gift offered to us without Christ. Through confirmation and through the reaffirmation affirmation of our faith, we renew the covenant declared at our baptism, acknowledge what God is doing for us, and affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. This morning I present to you John Humphrey, who comes to join in membership with this congregation. John, these questions are for you. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? Do you accept the freedom and power that God gives you to resist evil and injustice and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve Him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? I do. All right, and this, uh, these questions are for uh, the congregation. Do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? We do. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include John, who is now before you, in your care? With God's, God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround this person with a community of love and forgiveness that he may grow in his trust of God and be found faithful in his service to others. We will pray for him that he may be a true disciple who walks the way that leads to life. Now let us all join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments and in the Apostles' Creed. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of God the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. And do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the universal church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life and everlasting. Now, John, as a member of Christ Universal Church, will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen his ministries? I will. And as a, members, as a member of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministry by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? I will. Members of the household of God, I commend John to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase his faith, confirm his hope, and perfect him in love. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love. As members together with you in the body of Christ, and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness, and in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. Now may the God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and peace. 
and Juliet for 54 years of marriage and uh, for the strength that they show now in their love for each other. sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire 
that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem. There, now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment, because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, Are not all these men who, 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 speak, who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in his own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Fisher, Fisher, oh boy. <laughs> this is one of the, the best passages of scripture to read. Yes. <laughs> H R Y G I A. Phrygia. Phrygia. and Pamphylia, Egypt, and parts of Libya near Cyrene. Visitors, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Ju Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, What does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, They have had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will see dreams, will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. And they will prophesy. I will show wonders in heaven above signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned into darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved.
plank, then uh, Mike will, Mike's got some and he'll get one to you there. Well, the disciples soon pour out into the street. And who wouldn't want to go out into the street when there's a tornado and a fire in the house? That would get me out, too. And they began joyously sharing the good news. And Peter preaches that all who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. And the Bible tells us later in Acts 2 that those who believed what Peter said were baptized and added to the church that day, about 3,000 in all. What started with 120 human birthday candles has become a firestorm of faith that has sweeped the world, starting in Jerusalem with holy fire. Now one of the many sayings attributed to John Wesley, the founder of Methodism, was, Set yourself on fire for the Lord the world will come to watch you burn. Now, Wesley may or may not have said that, uh, but it's certainly something uh, that was in tune with the spirit of the early Methodist church. Uh, they loved to talk about the Holy Spirit uh, among the early Methodists. They would go anywhere, they would do anything to win more souls for the Lord. And one of my favorite stories is John Wesley himself, who was frankly, kind of a boring guy. He was about five feet tall, and he was a kind of a stuffy uh, uh, little Church of England pastor uh, and a, England, or a professor at Oxford University. Not the most thrilling person in the world, but when he would get out there preaching, uh, he would find himself doing all kinds of crazy things. And he went to Epworth, which was where his father had been a pastor, and they would not open the church up to him to deliver his message. So he found himself standing on top of his father's tomb, one of those raised tombs like standing on top of a picnic table, out in the cemetery preaching to a couple thousand people about uh, Jesus Christ. And uh, for a guy who thought it was almost a sin not to preach in the church, you can imagine uh, how crazy this must have felt. But uh, Wesley was on fire for the Lord. And the early Methodists were infused with this Pentecost spirit. Like the disciples that spilled into the street full of joy, pioneer Methodists couldn't have church or revival service without shouting and whooping and singing and dancing. Uh, I've told this before. Uh, uh, lots of people uh, thought the early Methodists were nuts. But just like the people in Jerusalem that said that uh, uh, maybe the disciples were drunk, uh, they got used to these Methodists uh, uh, whooping it up. Back in the hometown that I came, uh, my church that Onley's uh, and I came from, Attica, Indiana, the uh, Methodists made so much noise that the Presbyterians down the street had to send people up once in a while to ask them to hold it down because they were disturbing the Presbyterians' church service. Now, I'm, I'm sure the fishermen over here are glad we're not quite that loud, but uh, uh, nonetheless, it wouldn't hurt us to whoop it up a little bit once in a while. Does our happy and joyful response to Jesus Christ still interrupt the world today? Are you so on fire for the Lord that the world comes to watch you burn? Or are you just trying to blend in and get by? That's kind of a disappointing life. That's a, a wet blanket life. Cold and unfulfilling, not blazing and spirit-filled. It's almost like instead of being shout Methodists, we're librarian Methodists. Shh! Don't bother anybody. I don't think we're supposed to be librarian Methodists. It's time to rekindle your faith, your passion. At our best, Christians are still full of the Holy Spirit. It's like they say, burn, baby, burn. We're filled with uh, burning power to do and say amazing things for the Lord. Can I get an amen on that? Amen. amen. All right. Uh, pull out your little uh, uh, flame that you got this morning. Uh, Julie Baker got these for us. And, when she brought them in to show them to me, she put them on top of her head, and I said, that's cool, so we're all going to put our flames on top of our head here uh, for the rest of the message. So look around. Every one of us here is gifted with the Holy Spirit. We've got uh, specific gifts. Uh, we've got burning power to do and say amazing things to the Lord. Can I get an amen? Amen! amen. But our church, our little church here in Mosby, spends $30,000 a year and gives countless hours to missions, just to missions, feeding the hungry and getting transportation for the needy and visiting prisoners on work days to help in the sake Well, we are on fire for Jesus Christ. Can I get an amen? Amen! When we gather at the communion table with whoever comes, when we baptize,
baptize babies, and we welcome new members, when we celebrate a lifetime commitment of loving Mary, when we send our heart off to heaven with tears and with praise, when we sing joyfully and when we pray fervently, we are on fire for Jesus Christ. Can I get an amen? Amen! With you, you alone, at work or at home or out shopping or camping or playing sports, when you refuse to compromise
gift of communion. On the night that Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread, he blessed it and broke it, and offered it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, Jesus took the cup and again gave thanks to God his Father and then gave it to his friends and disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This cup is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Lord God, you created us to be creative people. You created us in your image and male and female. You created us in all of our wonderful diversity. You created us to respect, reflect aspects of your divine nature. Our ability to love, to serve, to be generous, all of these things come from you. And yet, you also gave us the free will we need to choose whether we uh, genuinely love and serve you, or whether we choose to follow our own way. And when we chose the wrong thing, when we chose to be selfish and to turn our backs on you, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, into this world. And through his life and his death and his resurrection, uh, through his sacrifice on our behalf, we have the promise of new life. We have forgiveness for sins. And then, as a comforter in this time between Jesus' resurrection and his return, you sent us the Holy Spirit to fill us with your strength, to help to guide us uh, when we are tempted to fall into sin once again, to comfort us and, and bring us peace in the midst of a troubled world. Lord, we pray that you will send your Holy Spirit upon us as you sent it upon the early church and that you will send it upon these gifts of bread and juice, that they may be for us the body and the blood of Jesus Christ, and that we might be, through your Holy Spirit, made one with you, one in service to all the world. Lord, make us to be the bread of your body, given, washed clean in your blood and given to the world. We pray these things in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Carol's going to help you with communion this morning. When you come up, come with your hands uh, crossed. You'll receive a piece of bread, and you can dip that in the juice and eat both elements together. I do have some gluten-free wafers, so if you would like one of those, ask me for one of those. We're just going to kind of, our wine will flow however it flows. <laughs> body of Christ which is given for you. And the blood of Christ shared for you.
Thank you for coming and worshiping with us today. Uh, this makes me want to have service out here every other Sunday all summer long. <laughs> uh, I don't know if it's going to be that nice every Sunday, though. But we have sure been blessed today. If you are visiting and you'd like to know more about this congregation that uh, tries to uh, burn with the Holy Spirit and be uh, truly a force for Jesus Christ in our community and the world, ask us. We're excited about what we do here, and we're excited to be servants of God. If you are working through something on your own, you know, either you're carrying a burden or you've got a joy, you just would love to share it with somebody, give me a call too. I'd be happy to spend some time personally with you praying or talking. Uh, I'm happy to be at my office or go out for coffee or come to your home, wherever is most convenient. Give me a call. We've got one last song to sing and I'll give the blessing and then somebody said there was going to be a picnic today. So I'm looking forward to that. As a forest meant for burning, with a bright and warming flame, so the church is meant for mission, giving glory to God's name, not to Your hearts at work here in Mosinee and in the world. Amen. Amen. 